Happy Monday! We've got seven jobs for today, and two of them um, me and Espen are going to do. Both of them are pretty large. We got tile and grout on one, and then a strip and wax on the other. And then the other five are pretty easy, and Sonny and Cole are going to knock those out. All the W 2s are ready, so we're going to be handing those out today, and that means we can be filing taxes. <music> our first job of the day it's a two-story move out cleaning with a closed loop or Berber carpet as it's commonly called closed loop fiber and there's three rooms upstairs the hallway the stairs you just saw a tile and grout bathroom up here and then quite a bit of tile and grout downstairs as well and there's an additional uh, carpeted room the master bedroom actually downstairs also so we've actually cleaned this home a number of times in the past. Good friends of ours that are relocating and they're going to be renting this house out. Here's the tile kitchen we're going to be cleaning and I'm trying to zoom down in there so you can see the grout lines. They're not real bad but you can definitely see a big difference in the high traffic areas and against the edge right there. Here's a good shot of the dining room. Pretty good sized space. The kitchen there and then of course we have a small laundry room to clean and the master bath that's the master bedroom you can see around the bed where the bed was and then the dresser there um, you can certainly see the areas of the carpet that are more heavily soiled that's the little laundry room we're going to be cleaning as well and then the master bathroom which is a pretty good sized master bath also goes right into the master closet of course the first step of any com um, professional carpet cleaning is the commercial vacuuming so I took the workhorse vacuum, which is this vacuum here, and Espen took the protein vacuum upstairs. And the only thing I was able to do was vacuum this one room, the master bedroom, and the closet, and then I went ahead and vacuumed the stairs as well. Now the carpet had already been vacuumed, and they did a really good job, but even still, you can see here how much dry soil we were able to remove. A pretty good amount in the vacuum canister right there. Here's a shot of Espen just preparing the tile and grout by spraying down the solution to clean that. While Espen did that, I went ahead and pre started to pre-spray the carpeted areas. This is the master bedroom, and in the darker areas that were a little bit more heavily soiled around the bed and so forth, of course I went ahead and laid it on a little bit thicker than the other areas. Most people refer to this method of cleaning as steam cleaning, but the professional correct term for this style of cleaning or method is hot water extraction. And so the water is really doing the cleaning for us. What the pre-spray or the preconditioner does is it just prepares the soil in the fibers to be able to be rinsed out and extracted once we have the hot water. We have a pretty large selection of cleaning agents that we use depending on the type of fiber and how heavily soiled the carpet is. So because the sprayer that I'm using to put down the pre-spray or the preconditioner right now is attached to that hose right there, the green hose, that actually runs out to the truck mounted machine in the van, making it very, very hot and helping the pre-spray do, do its job even better. One other thing we do every job is counter rotating brush machine, which is this machine right here. And all it does is agitate the preconditioner into the face yarn or fiber of the carpet. In addition to helping massage the preconditioner down into the fibers, these two brushes also dig out even more dry soil even after we've commercially vacuumed the carpet. Matter of fact, oftentimes the customer thinks that the cl cleaning is done after we pre-spray and use this counter-rotating brush machine or CRB because of how dramatically different and clean the carpets look after this one step alone. This is our 15 inch CRB and we actually have another one that's only 10 inches that works really, really well to agitate the carpet fiber on the stairs. But this machine is a little bit too bulky and heavy and awkward to do the stairs. So in lieu of that, we have several other pieces of equipment that we like to use for agitation of the carpet on the stairs. Here's a good shot of Espen agitating the carpet on the stairs using a battery operated drill and a green brush attachment. This convenient little tool makes a really, really good job of suspending the soils into the pre-spray right before we do the hot water extraction. And here's Espen starting to do the hot water extraction on this carpet on the upstairs. He did the extraction on all three of the bedrooms upstairs and the hallway. 
and it turned out really, really good. We have several different truck mounted machines, but this particular machine gets over 240 degrees at the van, which usually means just over 200 degrees at the wand. Even though we use high pressure, very well insulated steel braided solution line, we do lose quite a bit of heat from the van all the way to the wand. Even still, being able to rinse and extract the carpet with temperatures over 200 degrees Fahrenheit makes an easy job for getting these carpets looking really, really clean. Of course, anytime you're working with temperatures this high, there is always safety issues to be concerned about. Matter of fact, last week Espen suffered a pretty good burn on his arm trying to disconnect the solution line from the tile and grout spinner. Even though I have yet to buy a brand new machine or van, as we've upgraded over the years, it seems like every time we get a, used, a new used van, it's a little bit hotter and a little bit better than the ones we're used to. And a few months back, we did the same thing, bought a used van from my buddy Dave, and it is certainly the hottest van that we have in our arsenal. There were a few areas that really made a huge difference when we did the extraction. One was this hallway right here. The other one was the landing down at the bottom of the stairs, which happened to be right by the door, which is always a hot spot. And yeah, you're about to see the landing right here. And then the third one was the master bedroom. These three areas, you could really see a huge difference when we started to do the hot water extraction here. You probably noticed that this is a different uh, wand that we're using. It's not blue and green like the other one. And this is called a stair wand. It only has two jets on it and it's a much smaller and easier to maneuver tool to clean the stairs. This particular one I actually won at an event called Mikey's Fest almost a year and a half ago. Angela and I are actually planning to attend another Mikey's Fest in Nashville at the end of February that we're really excited about. One of the really cool benefits of attending and participating at the Mikey's Fest is that we're able to donate our time and talent cleaning the Ronald McDonald House for those much less fortunate. Another really neat perk is being able to meet cleaners from all over the country that come together to donate their time and just learning from them and figuring out what they're doing and why and utilizing some of their tips and strategies to help our own business grow. So because Espen did such a great job cleaning the carpet upstairs, I decided to give him a little break and clean the master bedroom here downstairs. And you can see if you look closely to that traffic lane on the left there that this cleaning definitely knocked it out and extracted that really, really well.
Once we got all the carpet done, we started to extract the tiling grout in the kitchen, laundry room, dining room, and master bathroom. So here's a great shot of our spinner, which is the tool right here, using the spinner on this grout and tile, zooming in and out to try and show you the huge difference that we were able to observe in the grout lines for this particular cleaning. Most of the time when we're extracting the carpet, our pressure we turn up to about five or six hundred psi but when we start to extract tiling grout we usually turn the pressure all the way up to eight hundred or a thousand and in some cases like when we did the hospital kitchen uh, last month we actually turned it up all the way to twelve hundred psi This job took Espen and I exactly two hours to complete and we charged just over $350. We'd also just been out to this house to clean the upholstery right before they had their stuff packed out for the move. Here's a real good shot of the master bedroom. You can probably remember what it looked like before where you could see where the bed was and what it looks like now. The results we were able to get were amazing. Our customer was very, very happy. And this is what we pulled out of that small little home, tile and grout and four rooms of carpet with the stairs. So pretty dark, pretty heavily soiled and a whole lot better than it was. The only other job that Espen and I had to do was this one right here and it's a vinyl composition tile or VCT job and it's obviously empty, another move out. And what we're going to do here is just strip and wax this floor. It's a little entry foyer, a living room, a hallway, a little utility room there, and then two small bedrooms with closets. And the condition of the vinyl isn't really that bad. You can definitely see where the wax was turning colors. So the first thing we did was lay down the floor stripper and then you see here we have a 175 floor machine where we scrub the floor stripper into the wax and you can see it's already taking that old wax off and etching down into the vinyl tile and getting it really really clean. We then take the mop and mop up as much of the slurry as we can and then we use another wand specially designed for this type of floor right there to rinse and clean it a little bit more. And then we obviously put the blowers down and dry it really, really well before applying the wax, which I'm doing here. This wax dries in about 20 to 30 minutes. And usually for floors like this, we put down between four and six coats of wax, depending on who we're working for and how shiny they want the finished product. We don't do a whole lot of this type of work, but we do have a handful of really good commercial accounts that use us exclusively for this type of floor cleaning because of the superior results that we're able to achieve every time. 
Well, that's it for today. Just want to thank everybody very much for taking the time to watch this. And if you enjoyed it, please consider sharing, liking, or commenting below. And be ready for another one tomorrow.